As we're waiting for people to arrive, we've got about seven minutes before class. If you have any special requests for today's practice, besides the continuing theme of spinal twists for this month, feel free to type in or say anything special you'd like to focus on. Hi, Laura. Uh, you're on mute, so I can't hear you. I'm gonna try. Hi. To... Hi. How you doing? We're gonna. My husband and I are practicing together, but we're not gonna practice with the, with our video on. Okay. I'm saying hi right now. All right. <laughs> Sounds good. His back is bothering him too, so I'm telling him to take it easy and. Um, okay. What part of the back? Maybe we can add what something. Part of your back, Brian. Back. Special to that. Oh, he was saying his lower left lower back okay well we are focusing on spinal twists so that should be helpful but depending on the cause of the pain just be gentle easing into the twists okay yeah. okay thank you yeah thanks for joining us okay, thanks. donna Laura's here. Hey, Gabrielle. Hi, Michelle. How are you? Good. How are you doing? I'm good. Cooper's here again. <laughs> Hi, Cooper. <laughs> <laughs> He just loves this whole quarantine because he's with me all the time. <laughs> he's like, she's doing poses I do. <laughs> well, now we're doing class today. How are you? I'm doing well. Yeah. You have more people or is it just me so far? Uh, if you look on your gallery, it looks like we've got, let's see how many, six people total right now. Oh, oh that's good. Yeah. That's still a few minutes early. Good. Any special requests? Um, my back is kind of, kind of feeling it. So maybe, yeah, stretch it and kind of get the kinks out. It'd be great. I hear you. That seems yeah. to be our, our common theme in these classes today. <laughs> yeah. So thank you so much. I do have a question for you. Can I yeah. ask? Okay. Yeah. Um, so for your other classes, the donation, mm -hmm. how do I how do I donate for your other classes? Um, if you go on to my website, it shows the different um, oh, apps, does? like Venmo oh. or Dell or PayPal and things like that. Oh, okay. That. I didn't know that. Okay. I yeah. want to help. If you can't find it, you can always Facebook message me. Okay. Okay. All right. Thank you. Perfect. Hi, Allison. Hey, John. Hey. <laughs> How are you today? Hi, Barbara. Oops. Hi, Barbara. It's Gabby. <laughs> <laughs> Hi, honey.
<sighs> nice to have some sunshine through these windows. Yeah. <laughs> Chad's joining us. Yes, over. Gotta move over. Hi, Gabby. I just wanted to say hi to you. It's Laura. Hi, honey. How are oh, yes. you? Husband's here practicing with me too. Good. Thank you. I, I miss you. I miss you too. I'm happy to see everybody, though. It makes me so happy on these classes. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Okay. I'll mute now. Okay. Oh, we have a couple minutes. I'll mute you all when, once we start yoga. So feel free to chat. It's nice to have a social time. <laughs> you gotta get off my mat. Go. Okay. Okay. <laughs> Drink here. God. Just chill. Dog butts. <laughs> <laughs> We've got Chad joining us. Who else is here? Mary. Hi, Mary. Hello. How are it's you two doing? Mike is with us. Who's with us? Mike, my husband. Mike. Hi, Mike. Hello. <laughs> hey, Carrie. Hi, <sighs> Michelle. How you doing? Doing better. Doing better? Hi, Tiffany. Hello. <laughs> oh, there's the dog again. <laughs> I know. I'm sorry. You just had a problem. <laughs> I'll throw them out. It'll the same thing. <laughs> it's and our little comic relief. Uh, Melanie's here. All right, last minute call for requests. We've got some lower back, spinal twists. Anything else you'd like to? Yeah. Say again. Lower back always. Ah, yes. I'm telling you, it's the recurring theme this week. <laughs> all right. Anything else before I mute you all? Uh, I broke. Uh, clothing rack in my house yesterday and cleaned for seven hours so everything hurt <laughs> okay take it easy i will all right so i'm gonna go ahead and mute you and i'll unmute you after the yoga practice okay bye um just just make sure please sometimes it goes off mute for some reason that you continue to see that microphone crossed off at the bottom left of your screen um, especially if you have sound happening in your background but I will go ahead and make sure now. See how it says allow participants to unmute themselves? Um, go to mute all. See that check up there? Oh, up left, up left. Yes, I see it. There you go. Got it. All right. Ah, all right. You might want to grab something to sit on if you're starting cross-legged and your knees are uncomfortably lifting up. You could prop your pelvis on top of a folded towel, a little pillow if you like, to get more comfortable and allow your lower back to lengthen. And then just take a moment as you rest your hands on your lap to ground the left and the right side of your sitting bones by rocking side to side and maybe even tilting forward and tilting back to feel the triangular base of your pelvis begin to more evenly carry your weight and as you press into the ground or what you're sitting on more firmly on both sides lift up through your lower spine feel your rib cage lift especially your back ribs feel your chest broaden and lift feel the back of your skull lift as your chin parallels the floor and then as you softly glide your chin towards the back of your throat, release the shoulder head slightly behind you and then soften the shoulder blades down. Feel this simultaneous rooting down through the pelvis and lifting up through the center of your spine. And now maybe close your eyes as you let your hands rest comfortably on your lap and just 
without changing it, notice the way that your body is breathing. Without having to judge it, good or bad, observe if it's shallow or deep, letting it be a window to your inner state of being, your mind, how you feel energetically. So it's with that greater sense of awareness you might establish your intention for this practice today of how you want to feel in your body, how you want to feel in your mind overall. And as you begin to steady your focus on that intention, steady your breath, inhaling a little slower, and through the mouth, exhaling a little deeper. Inhaling, feel the sitting bones ground. Through the mouth, exhale, hear the whispering sound. Take a few rounds of breath, inhaling through your nose and exhaling through your mouth as if you're fogging a mirror. So you can actually hear your breath whisper to the very end. And as you're sitting taller and taller, with this attention on your breath, feel a relaxed sense in your posture, a softening at the same time. So that in the way you now choose to consciously breathe, you affect the way you'll start to move your body, how you feel in your mind. I'd like to open the practice with a few quotes. If you've been practicing with us at Rising Lotus throughout this month, you've probably been hearing a lot about the five kleshas, or a Sanskrit word for roots of human suffering. Two of them that I've been really talking about this week in my classes are attachment, or a sense of clinging, and egoism, this identifying with a mind as the self. So here, is, here are a few quotes from Pema Chodron's book, The Places That Scare You, a guide to fearlessness in difficult times. It is possible to move through the drama of our lives without believing so earnestly in the character that we play, that we take ourselves so seriously that we are so absurdly important in our own minds is a problem for us. We feel justified in being annoyed with everything. We feel justified in denigrating ourselves or in feeling that we're more clever than other people. Self-importance hurts us, limiting us to the narrow world of our likes and dislikes. We end up bored to death with ourselves and our world. We end up never satisfied. On a lighter note, here's another quote, it is only when we begin to relax with ourselves that meditation becomes a transformative process. Only when we relate with ourselves without moralizing, without harshness, without deception, can we let go of harmful patterns. Without maitri or metta, which means loving kindness, renunciation of old habits becomes abusive. This is an important point. And finally, very targeted to these times we're enduring, it isn't the things that happen to us in our lives that cause us to suffer. It's how we relate to the things that happen to us that causes us to suffer or overcome. So as we begin the practice, feeling the breath rise and fall, feeling the steadiness and the sense of balance through the breath, something you do have control of. And when you feel you lose control of the breath, like it becomes disturbed or stagnant, maybe the mind wanders off, give yourself permission to adjust your physical. Maybe you slow down and you sit down, modifying in any way your physical practice to attend to that steady balance and calm of the breath. Let that be such an important part of this practice. So as you sit, if you are sitting cross-legged already, let's try switching the cross of the leg on top or in front 
so that you can start to balance out the hips, stretch the opposite side for them. And then placing your left fingertips on the ground beside your left hip, raise your right arm up and rotate this outer side, which is your tricep of your upper arm forward so that it begins to broaden the space across the top of the shoulder. As you root down through your sitting bones, press down the shoulders and then breathe in and lift the lower spine, middle spine crown. As you exhale, begin to side bend to your left and then pause. Feel your right sitting bone firming down a little deeper as you inhale to lift lower spine, middle spine crown. And exhale to maybe side bend a little further, continuing to honor the space along all the sides of your neck. Let's take this a few more breaths. You might feel okay to lower your left elbow or crawl the left fingertips out further. And as you hug in the bottom of your front ribs, feeling the firmness in your belly, see if it feels okay to look up past your right elbow towards the ceiling, finding a little spiraling action in the mid torso, beginning to twist. Let's give one last breath in this position. And as you breathe in, firm the belly in to rise up. And then place your left hand behind your pelvis. Keep raising that right arm. And then again, root down with the spine. Exhale, begin to turn your rib cage like it's a globe spinning on the axis of your spine. Notice the pelvis remains still. And then cross your right hand to the outside of your left thigh. If that feels too far away, your calf or hold on to the shin in front of you. And each inhalation, Feel and perhaps imagine your spine lengthening from tailbone up each vertebra to the ground. And as you exhale, stabilizing the pelvis still, see if you might be able to rotate your ribcage a little further into this gentle twist. Some of the benefits of spinal twists physically are to release the muscles along the spine, stretching the back, warming up the obliques, the muscles along the sides of the waist, important for core stability. Inhale here, and then exhale, unwind. Set your right fingertips to the ground beside your right hip, raise your left arm, and from the shoulder, rotate your left outer upper arm slightly forward, broadening the space on the top of the shoulder. Root down to your sitting bones, draw the shoulders down and breathe in to lift and lengthen your spine. Breathe out, begin to side bend to your right. Pause here, reground the left sitting bone especially, and then inhale, lift the spine from the pelvis. Exhale, if you can, side bend further, taking it breath by breath. You might walk the right fingertips further away. You might lower the right elbow. But feel that you maintain the space through all the sides of your neck. You're hugging in the belly, and perhaps even rotating the chest to slightly look up past your left elbow. Last two deep breaths. So opening up the side body will give us a little more space to really bring it, bring it out in these twists. Not only releasing the spine, inhale, slowly rise up. Let's bring the soles of the feet together. We'll add a, a nice gentle stretch for the lower back a little bit more. Soles of the feet together, catch hold of your big toes or your outer feet. And as you bring the heels close to your pelvis, again, press down through the pelvis and lift up the spine. Now notice this natural space between your chin and chest like you're holding an apple there. Try to maintain it and begin to hinge forward from your hips. A little bit and then pause. Let the pelvis get heavier as you lift and lengthen the spine, breathing in. Exhale, maybe hinging from the hips a little bit more, just finding the range of that forward fold that allows you to maintain that open space at your throat and that you feel your shoulders are relaxed, neck is long, two more breaths here and bound angle pose, Baddha Konasana, also opening up the hips. Some other health benefits of spinal twists as we go deeper into them through these postures is massaging and helping to stimulate your digestive organs, affecting not only the way you take in and let go of what is unnecessary in terms of physical nourishment, but also how we take in and let go what happens to us in these days releasing what's no longer necessary as you lift from your chest, breathe in to rise up. Let's bring the knees behind you. Come on to all fours, hands and knees, tabletop. Having your knees right under your hips. See that your wrists are about two inches in front of your shoulders. 
and then hollow and lift the center of each palm so that you're high on your fingertips as much as you can. So you're pushing the floor away to get lighter, like you're holding cupcakes with your hands with tall icing. And as you breathe in, start from the lower spine, stretching it from the pelvis and tilt your chest up, roll your shoulders down into cow pose. As you breathe out, start by contracting the belly, tuck the tail and underneath, then drop the skull to round your back, cat pose again. Inhale, stretch the lower back, arch right under the shoulder blades, lifting the heart, drop the shoulders behind you. Exhale, firm the abdomen, feel contraction there. Look underneath your belly and inhale, chest forward into cow. Long exhale, rounding into cat. And as you listen to your own breath, try a couple more rounds at your pace. Really taking your time to feel the variety of sensations throughout your torso. As you release any feelings of stuckness along your spine, in your back, or even mentally and energetically. On an exhale, relax to a neutral spine. Plant your palms flat. Still the wrists are a couple inches in front of the shoulders. Look at your hands and spread your fingers wide, pointing your index fingers forward so they're parallel to each other. Thumbs are stretched out. Ground firmly between your thumbs and your index fingers. Broaden the shoulder blades across your upper back by wrapping these triceps again, these outer upper arms towards the rear of your mat, lengthening your neck, tuck your toes. Feel that your feet are a little wider than hips distance. And then scooping the belly in, push the floor away with your hands to lift your knees, lift your hips. Lifting your sitting bones as high as you can with very bent knees, look down at your feet and relax your neck. How's your breathing? You can always set the knees back down anytime you want to rest from downward dog. Otherwise, start to pedal your feet in place as you press one heel down, straighten the leg, take a breath. Opposite heel down, stretching into your calf, your hamstring, even your glutes perhaps. You might even like to swivel your hips left and right, looking underneath your armpits, one side and the other, shaking the head, relaxing your neck. Breathe in, breathe out. Slow, calm breaths. Now as you parallel your feet again, hips width or wider, bend your knees and lift your sitting bones again as high as you can. And as you flatten the palms to the floor as if you're pushing the floor away, draw your shoulders up away from the neck, let the head fall, and continue to rotate your outer upper arms towards the mat. Two more breaths and downward facing dog. You might start to firm the tops of your thighs back towards straightening the legs, only if you can maintain that lift in your hips and the feeling of a flat back. Then as you exhale next, begin to walk forward to stand in a forward fold at the top of your mat. Separating your feet, hips width or wider, parallel. Bend your knees a lot here and catch hold of opposite elbows with your hands. Drop your skull completely, maybe shake the head some more, and tilt your weight forward so you feel that it's slightly heavier on the balls of your feet than your heels. Bend your knees so much that your belly could rest on your thighs. And then just let the head fall. As you hold your elbows, gently pull them forward, feel the stretch in the side waist. But at the same time, lift your shoulder bones up away from the neck. So feel that space in the neck. You might even cross the, the other elbow on top and start to sway your spine, loosening up your back, decompressing the spine. Breathe in. Breathe out. Nice way to release tension if you start to feel it building up, especially in your mouth, is just, just take a big sigh. You're on mute, you can roar it out as much as you like. <sighs> or flutter the lips, that feels really nice. So utilizing all these various yogic tools from breath work to posture to focus, press your fingertips on the floor, your shins, or your thighs. Keep at least a little bend in your knees. Firm the belly towards the back and breathe in to stretch your spine forward parallel to the floor, sliding the shoulders away from the neck. Exhale, keep the knees bent and fold forward. 
Same thing again. Inhale, press with your fingertips and stretch the spine further forward. Feel the weight shift towards the balls of the feet. Keep it forward. Exhale to fold. Firm down through your feet. Inhale, raise your arms overhead, watching your palms touch. Exhale, trace your thumbs down your center line. Coming into mountain pose. So have your arms by your sides, palms face forward. Feel your weight spread out through the four corners of each foot as you spread your toes. And with intending to root down to your feet, feel the energy rise to the legs. The kneecaps slightly lift, the chest broadens and lifts, crown lifts. And then relaxing the shoulders, feel the tailbone anchor down towards the ground between the heels. Breathe in, breathe out. Let's flow, half sun salutations. Inhale, sweep your arms overhead, palms touch. Exhale, you might bend the knees as you fold with a flat back. Press the ground or your legs. Inhale, lengthen forward, halfway up. Exhale, bow again. Firm the legs. Inhale, circle the arms to rise up. Exhale, join your palms at your heart. Let's try two more rounds with your breath. Inhale, raise the arms in Urdhva Svasana. Exhale, bow in Uttanasana. Inhale, half bow in Ardha Uttanasana. Exhale again, Uttanasana. Root down through the legs. Inhale, rise up in Urdhva Hastasana. Exhale, hands to the heart in Tadasana. Last time, inhale, sweep the arms. Exhale, bow forward. Inhale, lengthen forward. Exhale, bow. Inhale, rise tall, palms meet. Exhale, mountain pose. Nice. So let's add on, warming up the rest of the body. Inhale, sweep the arms overhead. Take hold of your left wrist with your right hand. I think that's cut off in the, in the screen. Here it is. And root down to your left foot. Lift the sides of your waist, but relax the shoulders down and begin to side bend to your right for a few breaths. Feel your tailbone like it's, an, it's a heavy anchor reaching towards the ground between your heels. Feel the front ribs hug in towards your back. Shoulders relax down the back. Into your left side of your rib cage, focus a deep inhalation to expand. As you exhale, draw the lower belly in and rise up. Switch hands, the left hand catches hold of the right wrist, root down to your right foot. Breathe and lift the lower spine from the pelvis, but relax the shoulders. Exhale to your left, side back. Inhale, lift and lengthen. Exhale, further side back. Feel your tailbone anchor downward, your front ribs hug in, your shoulders relax. Into the right wall of your rib cage, focus a deep breath in. Firm the abdomen, exhale to rise up. Nice. Inhale, sweep the arms overhead, watch the palms meet. Exhale, bow forward. Inhale, press your legs to the floor, lengthen. This time, lower your fingertips outside of your feet, step your left knee on the ground behind you into a kneeling lunge. If you need more cushion under that knee, you could pull the left side of your mat, make it a little thicker. Now, scoot your right foot outside of your right hand so it's a little closer to the right edge of your mat, like a wider lunge. And with the support of your left hand on the floor or propped up on an object, flex your right foot, stabilizing your right knee. And with your right hand, gently press the inside of your right thigh to guide it to splay open. So now you're leaning on the knife outer edge of your right foot flex. Breathe in and stretch your torso forward down the midline of your mat. Breathe out, maybe look behind your right shoulder if it feels okay on your neck adding a little bit of a twist to this outer hip opener, opening up the sacrum as well. Let's take about three more deep breaths here. Keep flexing the right foot, making sure the middle toe is in line with your right knee. Breathe in, breathe out. Then begin to step the right foot flat on the ground again, turning it to face the front, Walk it into the inside of your right hand into a regular lunge. That's it. Tuck your left toes, come into a high lunge, and starting with your right knee bent directly above your right heel, inhale, let your pelvis sink. If it feels like your hands are too, uh, can't reach the ground easily, 
keep your back knee on the floor here. You can keep it on the floor through this flow we're about to do. As you exhale, scissor your right outer hip back towards straightening your right leg as you bow inside of it. If your back knee's on the floor, you could flex your right toes off the floor. Inhale, re-bend your right knee back to a lunge. Sorry, your front knee. And exhale, scissor your right hip back towards straightening the leg to full. Let's take three more rounds with your breath. Inhale, lunge, whether it's a high lunge or a kneeling lunge. Exhale, scissor the right hip back, whether it's half split or pyramid pose. Inhale, lunge. Exhale, scissor, and fold. Last round, inhale, lunge. Exhale, scissor, and fold. Nice, inhale, lunge. Plant your hands flat on the floor. Let's step back to plank pose of your choice. Now you might want to start with your knees on the ground, setting it up. Otherwise, if you feel very energetic, like straight, Make sure your shoulders are right on top of your wrists. You're looking on the ground just in front of your hands. Lower belly is lifted. Sides of the neck are long. As you exhale, glide forward as far as you can. Bend your elbows back. Arms graze your side ribs. Lower your chin all the way to the mat. Slide your chest forward and glide your belly to the ground. Legs straight back. Point your toes and press the tops of your feet into the ground. Feel that your wrists are alongside your floating ribs. Hug your elbows close to your sides. And through the work of your upper back, lift your chest lightly off the mat so the head gently follows about three breaths in baby cobra. As you keep firming the tops of your feet down, your tailbone actively lengthening towards your heels, all of that supports your lower back as you open up your chest. Exhale, press down with your hands and lift up to all fours. Tuck your toes behind you and lift your hips back. Downward facing dog. Breath in, breath out. Couple more breaths. So feel in downward dog, you're doing whatever you need to do with the legs. And you bend to legs straight to maintain the feeling of a flat back where there's no added tension in your neck or shoulders. Shoulders are free away from the neck. From here, bend your knees, look in front of your hands. As you exhale, walk to the front of your mat to stand in a forward fold. Inhale, press to lengthen forward. Exhale, fold. Inhale, circle the arms to rise up. This time, interlace your fingers and flip your palms inside out. Press down to your feet, press up to the heels of your palms and relax the shoulders, breathe in. To your right side, exhale, side bend. Where you are, breathe in. Lengthen the lower spine from the pelvis. Breathe out, sigh, bend a little further if you can. One more breath. Pressing out through the heels of your palms. Firm the lower belly in. Inhale, rise to center. Switch the interlacing of your thumb and index on top. Press the heels of your palms up towards the ceiling. Draw the shoulders and feet down. Inhale, exhale, side bend to your left. Inhale, lift the lower spine from the pelvis. Exhale, side bend further. One more breath. Pressing to the left with the heels of your palms. Firm the lower belly in. Inhale to rise up. Exhale, open your arms and fold forward. Inhale, press to lengthen halfway. Exhale, lower your fingertips outside of your feet and step your right knee back into a kneeling lunge. Then scoot your left foot closer to the left edge of your mat so it's outside of your left hand. Flex your left foot, stabilizing your left knee. And with your right hand on the ground, use your left hand to gently splay open your inner left thigh. So now you're leaning just in the knife outer edge of your left foot. Breathe in, stretch your spine down the center line of your mat. Breathe out. You might work on looking over your left shoulder, adding a little bit of a twist. Now feel that your shoulders are clear away from your neck, especially this right shoulder, rather than collapsing our weight into it. We're pushing the floor away, creating space in the right shoulder while sending the right shoulder blade down the back. Last two breaths here. Begin to walk your left foot into a regular size lunge, so feet are hips distance. 
plant the left foot flat and facing forward. Fingertips are framing that left foot. Now you can either come up high in the lunge, lifting the back knee. If that causes you to shrug the shoulders or the ground feels too low, just keep the back knee on the ground as we flow. Inhale in your lunge. Exhale, scissor your left hip back towards straightening the leg as you bow. Inhale, back to a lunge. Exhale, scissor the left hip back. If the back knee is on the floor, you could curl your left toes up as you straighten the leg. Inhale into a lunge. If you're in a high lunge, exhale as you straighten your in pyramid pose. Two more cycles of breath. Inhale, lunge. Exhale, scissor and fold. How's your breathing? Lunge and scissor and fold. Come back to a lunge. Plant your hands flat on the mat. Step into your version of plank. Pause for an inhalation. Knees could be on the ground. This time, glide forward. Hug your elbows towards your ribs as you lower through a four-limb stack all the way to the ground. Ground to your pelvis and the tops of the feet. Roll your shoulder heads back and down, lifting your chest and cobra. Push down with your hands and tuck your toes, pressing up to all fours or a full plank. Lift your pelvis back, downward facing dog. Three to five breaths. So as you're spreading your weight from the heels of your palms throughout your fingertips, throughout your knuckles, you're lifting the shoulders up away from your neck, dropping your head as you look down towards your feet, spreading the shoulder blades onto the back ribs, sealing the front ribs in, and pressing the tops of your front thighs back. With very bent knees, lift your heels and hips high, Look forward beyond your hands. This time, exhale, hold the breath out if you can, and think of lifting your pelvic floor as you walk or lightly jump to the front of your mat. Forward fold. Inhale, press to lengthen forward. Exhale, fold. Inhale, circle your arms to rise, palms touch. Exhale, trace your thumbs down your center to sun salutation aids. Inhale, circle the arms up. Exhale, forward fold. Inhale, press to lengthen forward. Step into your version of plank. Exhale, glide forward. You could always do knees, chin, and then slide forward if you like. And lower. Inhale into cobra unless you normally practice upward dog. Exhale, as you push the ground away, firm your belly. Feel the lift from the navel to lift the pelvis back. Downward facing dog. Let's stay here for three to five breaths, focusing on refining the qualities in your breathing that you want to feel in your mind, that you want to feel in your body. And as you feel a stability in your breathing, bend your knees, lift your heels and hips, look forward. At the end of your exhale, lift your pelvic floor and lightly land at the front of your mat, walk or jump. Inhale, press to lengthen halfway. Exhale, forward fold. Inhale, root down to rise totally. Exhale, hands together at your heart. Last time, sun salutation A. Inhale, sweep the arms up. Exhale, bow forward. Inhale, press to lengthen halfway. Step to your version of plank. Either knees, chin, slide forward or shift forward. Hug your elbows to your sides and lower. Cobra or upward facing dog as you inhale. Press into the ground and lift through the belly. As you exhale, downward facing dog. Breathe in, breathe out. Now staying in downward dog, when both feet are on the ground, feel the left and right side of your hips equal in height from the floor. Try to maintain that by firming your outer hips towards your midline and firming the belly in. While you inhale to raise your right leg behind you, look under your belly and see your right toes all facing the floor. Then as you evenly push off your hands, draw your left hip back, feel the evenness in both sides of the torso. Take another breath in, 
Exhale, bend your right knee towards your nose. Use the lift of your belly to softly land right foot forward inside of your right hand. If it doesn't make it all the way there, grab your ankle with your hand and slide it forward. Now stay on the ball of your left foot and make sure that your outer feet are as wide apart as your outer hips. Doesn't feel like you're in a tightrope. Front knee is directly on top of the heel. Now imagine that you're dragging your feet towards each other. Feel that stability through your legs, a little lift in the pelvic floor. Begin to raise the arms back by your sides, palms face down, look beyond the front of your mat, open the chest, breathe. Lift the belly to hover off your right thigh, feel the strength of your legs. Then press through your feet and sweep your arms to slowly rise. Bend the left knee. You could always set the left knee all the way on the ground if you want to. Otherwise, use the bend in your left knee to allow your pelvis, which is shaped like a bowl, rather than spilling forward to sit upright. You're lifting the frontal hip bones, the tailbone is anchoring down, both hips are equally facing forward, and through the lift of your arms, feel the length all the way down the sideways. Soften the shoulders, soften the tongue, last two breaths in crescent pose. Now bring your hands to your hips and lower your left knee to the ground, untuck the toes. With your right knee directly on top of your right heel, firm that foot into the ground. Use your right thumb and hook the outer crease of your right hip, pressing it down. Feel the stability of your legs. Reach the left arm up and inhale, stretch your spine forward down the midline of your mat. As you exhale, rotate your chest to face the right. Now either lower the left hand down on the floor, right under the shoulder, or take the left elbow and hook it outside of your right thigh. You can either splay the arms open there or join your hands in prayer. We're here for about four more breaths. So as you root down through both feet, even the top of your back foot, stretch your spine forward a little bit more, hug your hips still, and feel that as you're rotating your rib cage, you're twisting just across your waistline. Soften the shoulders down your back. Relax the eyes. One more deep breath. So nice. Look down at your right foot, lower your hands, and step back, downward facing dog. If you need to move around right now, flow through a vinyasa or go down to hands and knees and take a few cat cows. We'll meet in downward facing dog for a few breaths. Nice, everyone. So feel your two hips leveled, maintaining that by firming your outer glutes towards your midline. Inhale, raise your left leg behind you, flexing the foot. Take a few breaths, look under your belly, at your left toes all facing the ground. Feel your hands equally pressing down. Draw the right hip back. As you exhale, bend the left knee towards your nose, feel the Strength of your belly to lightly land left foot forward just inside of the left hand. Come into a high lunge and separate your outer feet as wide apart as your outer hips. So back heel is lifted off the floor. Bend your front knee right on top of the heel. Imagine you're dragging your feet towards each other. That kind of strength in the muscles to be able to lift the arms back by your sides, palms face down. Look forward, relax the shoulders, breathe. Firm the belly and lift it to hover off your left thigh. One more breath. Press through your feet, bend your right knee, and raise your arms up, coming into crescent lunge. So remember, you could also lower your right knee all the way to the floor if you need more support for balance here. Use the bend of the right knee to help orient your pelvis from tilting forward to sitting upright. And observe how that creates more space in your lower spine, the rest of your spine, and your breathing. Last two breaths. Bring your hands down to your hips. Lower your right knee. Untuck the back toes. With your left knee right on top of the heel, firm the left foot still. Using your left thumb, hook the outer crease of your left hip. Tack it down and back. Stretch the right arm and spine forward as you breathe in. Use your twisting muscles, your obliques, to turn the chest to the left. Either lower right hand on the ground just under your shoulder, or take the right elbow and hook it outside your left thigh. Splaying the arms there, or joining the palms in prayer. 
As you breathe in, continue to lengthen your lower spine from your pelvis. As you breathe out, keep stilling the hips while rotating the rib cage. Last couple of breaths, soften the shoulders. Notice if there's any tension in areas of the body that don't need to be exerting force. Nice, look down at your left foot. Lower your hands. This time, look forward, step forward to fold at the top of your mat. Heel toe your feet apart a little wider than hips distance. Bend your knees and reach your hands behind you, either to clasp or to hold a strap or something like it between. As you tilt more weight forward, breathe in and lift the chest. Hug the elbows closer together. Exhale, fold and drop your head. As the hands stay together, lift your arms up and away from your lower back. Take a deep breath, open the mouth wide and stick out your tongue. <sighs> Ruling lion's breath, one more. Inhale, fill it up. Eyes and mouth open, stick out the tongue. <sighs> Maybe shake out the head. And then release the arms down and with knees very bent, inhale to roll up, stacking one vertebra at a time. Lifting your head last. <sighs> roll the shoulders back and down. All right, everyone. Let's use the mat sideways so we can stand with the feet really wide apart. And as I'm facing you now directly, think of me as a mirror, and I'll say what my body's actually doing the opposite side of. So as you open your arms, have your feet as wide apart pretty much as your hands are splayed apart. If you want something less intense, go a little shorter in your stance. And then from your hips, rotate your thighs and pivot both feet to face the back end of your mat. So now your left foot is your front foot. Align your left heel to intersect the arch of your right foot. And as you're standing upright, see that your right knee and toes are slightly facing the back. Look at your left knee as you bend it to stack right on top of the heel. Feeling that left leg turn out, your outer left hip slightly wraps under. Then from the top of your right thigh bone back and feel your bowl shaped pelvis sitting upright. Spine is centered upright, then reopen your arms. Feel the reach through your fingertips, broadening your chest and shoulders, and relax the shoulders. Steady your eyes on one spot, just in front of your left hand. Feel the breath in, feel the breath out. About four more cycles of breath here in warrior two, Virabhadrasana two. Firming down through both feet, straighten your legs and raise your arms. Feel the spine get a little taller with arms up. Keep the spine tall and reopen your arms. Shorten your stance just two or three inches as we prepare for triangle pose. With legs straight from the front of your thighs and glide your pelvis sideways towards the front edge of your mat. Reach your left hand beyond your left knee then laterally tilt your spine to land your left hand either onto your left leg or just to the left, just to the outside of it. As you raise the right arm up, lean back as if there's a wall like these curtains behind me that you could lean your back body against. And feel that you're trying to equally lengthen both sides of your torso. That left outer hip continues to roll slightly under your body. You're pressing the crease of your left hip back towards your outer right foot. Shoulders relaxing down the back as the belly firms in. And maybe you're looking up past your right thumb, last three breaths in triangle pose. Uttita Trikanasana. From your right shoulder, rotate your right tricep forward towards the screen and sweep your right arm overhead, breathing into that right side of your rib cage. Just one breath. Press down to your feet, firm the belly in, and inhale to rise. Now slide your feet apart as you parallel them. Again, into that stance where your ankles are pretty much under your wrists. From your hips, rotate your thighs, pivot both feet to the exact opposite edge of your mat. 
Now with your right foot as the front foot, align your right heel to intersect the arch of your left foot. Bend your right knee just on top of the heel. Feel that the turn inward of your left leg allows the complete turn outward of your right leg. Feel that your pelvic bowl is sitting upright, the belly is firm. As you open the arms, shoulders are right over the hips, relaxed. And then you're breathing as you gaze past your right hand, slowly in, slowly out. About four more breaths in Virabhadrasana, two, warrior two. Feel your weight pressing down through both feet. As you straighten your legs, perhaps slide them a little closer together, about two to three inches. Raise the arms and lift and lengthen the sides of your waist. Keep that lift as you relax the shoulders and reopen the arms. Slide your pelvis sideways towards the back edge of your mat. Reach your right hand past your right knee. Set your right hand down onto your right leg or just to the right of it. And as you raise the left arm, lean back to that left shoulder, you'll know if you need to adjust your right hand higher or lower so that you can comfortably lean the left shoulder back and breathe. Feel the sides of your neck long. Feel the bottom of your front ribs firming in towards the back, maybe looking towards your left thumb. Last three breaths here in Uddita Trikonasana, Triangle Pose. From your left shoulder, rotate your left tricep towards the screen. Reach the left arm overhead into the left side of your rib cage. Deep breath. Firm down to your feet and firm the belly in. Inhale to rise up. So come into this wide stand still, parallel your feet, and bring your hands to your hips. As you roll the shoulders back, take a deep breath. Exhale, hinge from your hips and fold forward with a feeling of a flat back. So if it requires you to bend your knees to maintain that flat back, do so. Lower your hands. If the floor is too low and you don't have objects to place your hands on, you could bend the knees deeper and or walk the feet wider apart. As you lift the spine, imagine you're pressing your heart through the gates of your arms, keeping the sides of your neck long. Plant your right hand front and center. Keep your hips squared and raise your left arm up. Another spinal twist, turning your chest to face the back edge of your mat. Inhale, stretch your lower spine from your pelvis, lengthen through your crown. Exhale, isolate the twist to deepen at your waistline, rotating the rib cage. Take one more breath as you broaden your chest. Then set your left hand down in place of the right. Keep your hips squared and raise your right arm up. Inhale, stretch the spine forward. Exhale, stabilize the hips and rotate your rib cage. Couple more breaths. Set your two hands down and begin to walk your hands to the front of your mat, pivoting to face the front in a lunge. Coming down to hands and knees, all fours. From all fours, shift way forward. Take a few breaths to hug the elbows in and slowly lower all the way to the ground. Rest your forehead on the floor and slide your arms straight back beside your thighs, preparing for a few back bends. We'll start in locust pose, which is great for strengthening the lower back, especially if you're having any stiffness or vulnerability there. Bring your knees close together. So feet are hips width apart. Parallel your feet as you point your toes. Press your pubic bone into the ground. Think of stretching the tailbone towards the heels. And as you inhale, contract your upper back and lift your chest by rolling the shoulders behind you. Let the head gently follow, keep breathing. Now push your heels back so much that as your legs are straight, they begin to rise off the ground. Lift your arms back or open 
Or if you want more rigor, reach them forward to get at least three more breaths here before lowering everything to the ground to rest. Shoulders relaxed, heart lifting, tailbone lengthening towards the heels. When you decide to come down, lean one ear towards the ground. You might make a pillow out of your hands. Pigeon toe your feet, helping to broaden your lower back. And take just about two slow breaths into your stomach. Out to your mouth. Into your stomach. Out to your mouth. One more locust pose. So arms can either be down by your sides again, or you could clasp your hands behind your lower back or hold a strap between the hands. Feet hips width apart, keep your feet parallel. Begin to press the pubic bone down, lift the chest. Imagine you could breathe into your heart and float it up. The head gently follows. Lifting the legs, lengthen the back, and then count at least five breaths before lowering all the way to the ground. Feel your tailbone actively lengthen towards the space between your heels. Paralleling your feet and thighs, spin inner thighs slightly towards the sky. When you decide to come down, rest the opposite ear towards the ground. Maybe make a pillow out of your hands. Again, pigeon toe your feet or rock your pelvis side to side, more actively loosening your lower back or bend your knees and windshield wiper your shin side to side, even more actively massaging your lower back. Let's take three deep breaths into the stomach, out through the mouth. And then with legs straight back, let your hands beside your lowest ribs. Press up to all fours, hands and knees. Now we're going to take a counter stretch here, another spinal twist. So with your knees right under your hips, set your wrists forward of your shoulders about two inches. Thread the needle, raise the right arm up, and slide it underneath the left bent elbow. With your right palm face up, lower the right side of your head all the way down. You could also put something under your head if it doesn't reach the ground easily. Flare your left elbow up off the ground and then rebalance your hips so you're just twisting at your waistline here. Feel your upper back broaden, shoulders relax, neck long. Two more breaths. Press into the ground and slowly rise up. Back to all fours. Second side, raise your left arm up and thread it underneath your right bent elbow. Resting the left side of your head all the way down, left palm face up. Flare your right elbow towards the ceiling and slide your shoulders down your back. Square off your hips, breathing into your upper back. One more breath. Let's slide into child's pose from here. Bring your feet together to touch. Now knees could be together unless that prevents you from lowering your pelvis easily towards your feet. If that's happening, then separate your knees as wide apart as needed to really relax the hips down. And get a nice stretch in the lower back. Arms wherever you like, forward or down by your sides. Imagine you could paint the back of your spine with your breath. Feel it in your lower back, middle back, upper back, neck. Take a long breath in. Open the mouth. Exhale. <sighs> Plant your hands on the floor beside your knees. Tuck your chin to your chest. Firm the belly, and inhale, slowly roll up to stack one vertebra at a time, lifting the head last. Then slide your legs in front of you, 
Bring your pelvis to the middle of your mat. Set your feet down with knees bent. I come to lie down on your back. Keeping your left foot on the floor, pick up your right foot and flex it. Cross your right ankle over your left thigh like a figure four shape. Either use your right hand to gently press the top of your inner right thigh open or thread your right hand between your thighs and with two hands catch hold of your left thigh or shin, bringing it slowly closer to your chest. Breathe in, feel the shoulders relax on the ground. Breathe out. Just a few more breaths here. Feel your jaw and tongue relax. On your exhale, step your left foot on the ground, step your right foot on the ground. Just be still. Notice if you feel any difference in both sides of your hips or lower back. Hmm. Let's switch. Cross your left ankle over your right thigh. Make sure to flex your left foot the entire pose. Either use your left hand to gently splay your inner left thigh open or thread your left hand between your thighs and catch hold of your right leg with two hands. Gently bringing the right leg towards your chest, relax your head and shoulders on the ground. Feel your body breathing. And uncross your legs, step your two feet on the ground. That's still injured there, tap dancing. Sorry, guys. And with your feet on the floor, drop your knees together to touch. You could scoot your feet a little wider apart than hips distance. It's just a gentle way to broaden the sacrum, stretch the lower back sideways. Set your left hand on your heart. Set your right hand on your lower belly. Soften your shoulders down your back. You close your eyes. Feel the subtle weight of your eyeballs sink into their sockets. Feel your cheeks relax. Feel the skin on your forehead soften. Feel your scalp relax. Feel your tongue and jaw let go of any tension. Trace your attention down the rest of your body, consciously and lovingly those parts permission to relax, to no longer exert effort, as you also do it in your breathing, allowing the breath to flow freely. From here, you slide your legs straight forward to using Tushavasana and corpse pose, or you could drop the knees wide apart, the opposite of what you've been doing and bring the soles of your feet together to touch in supine bound angle or supta baddhakanasana. Do what's most comfortable for you to let your body be still in for the next few minutes. And as you allow the breath to flow freely, continue to rest your attention on your breath.
as your body remains still, feel the gentle flow of your breath. Observe how you affected your state of being. And like you're waking up someone that you love, begin to gently wiggle your toes, rub your fingertips together. Gently turn your head, ease into a simple stretch. And with eyes still closed, bend your knees, and roll over to your right side, pausing a moment as you rest your head. Having lie down to rest in corpse pose, which represents a release of something, a shedding away, or death. We now transition into a fetal pose, which represents a rebirth, a renewal, enjoying what you've cultivated. Bringing that with you as you press into the earth and rise up. Please find a comfortable seat. Let's pause together for one minute, feeling the effects of our practice or sending an intention for the world <coughs> of global healing. <coughs> Please join your hands together at your heart as you lift your hearts. Bow in in appreciation of yourself for showing up, for being a part of this movement. For encouraging wellness, peace. And as in Pema Chodron's words, it isn't the things that happen to us in our lives that cause us to suffer. It's how we relate to the things that happen. And thank you for choosing to spread peace in the way you relate. Let's close the practice with one own. Take a deep breath. The light in me bows to the light in you. Namaste. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much. <laughs> nice Just to see you all your faces. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Drink a lot of water after all that twisting. <laughs> yeah. Hot tea will be good. Miss you guys. <laughs> Good to see you all here. Thank you so much for sharing your practice today. Peace. Bye. Bye, everyone. Bye. Oh. All right. I'll keep you out of front.